Okay, I'm going to do a little CRM blog here. The, I'm Jonathan David Baird. Um, I'm not used to vo video blogging. I actually did a uh, podcast for a couple years that um, I don't think it's online right now. Uh, it was online for a while. Uh, that blinking light you see in the background is for my solar panels and my power. Um, I, I have a backup power here in the house. Um, being many years out in the field, uh, you you learn a lot of uh, workarounds for things like power, um, food, <laughs> things like that. Um, you know, I lived in my truck for a year, no, more than a year, probably two years I lived in my truck for two years in upstate New York, and those two winters were uh, especially hard. I, I, and I guess I'll start telling a few stories. I was going to tell stories about animals, but I think I'll tell stories about living on the road. Uh, I lived on the I lived on the road almost twenty years doing CRM, so I've I've I mainly worked on the East Coast, and I've been all up and down the East Coast. Uh, I worked for a long time in uh, upstate New York and in uh, northern Pennsylvania, doing uh, a highway project that ran up through uh, the Susquehanna Valley. That's when I lived in my truck for probably two years. We we had hotel rooms during the work. We had ten days on and four days off. So those four days, I didn't have a hotel room, and I wasn't driving all the way back to my house in North Carolina. So I lived in my truck. You know, four days out of t you know every ten four four of the days I would live in my truck. Uh, had a mattress. In the back of the truck, I, I lived in rest areas. I, I did a thing called uh, the Society of Creative Anachronism, and they had a camping event every week. And so basically, I just went in, camped at those events, ate at those events um, every weekend. Uh, and we didn't it, we didn't always have weekends, so I would stay at rest areas, uh, truck stops. Occasionally, I would get a hotel room if I had a little extra money. Um, and I, it, it worked out. I, sometimes I would uh, go in and buy a movie ticket and go watch every movie, um, and just to just to get out of you know being in a car. And, and no one really ever stopped me. I just went from theater to theater, and never got called. So I watched a lot of movies for that those two years. Um, and and I and I'm sure every uh, cultural resource management uh, you know tech has sort of this same. They at least during the time that I was doing this, we all, all of us that were from far away, uh, had to make arrangements, and everybody had. I mean, sometimes we would, uh, you know, all pitch in and buy a hotel room, and everybody would stay in the hotel room. I, I remember I stayed in a hotel room with this guy uh, from uh, Nigeria, who was working on his PhD. <laughs> And he would wake up in the middle of the night to watch the World Cup. And I was like, oh, my God, I've got to sleep. It's 4 o'clock in the morning, and you're watching the World Cup. Um, do you, I understand it comes on at weird hours, but Jesus, don't wake everybody up. It was, it was interesting. It was, it was an interesting time. Um, didn't care much for upstate New York and Pennsylvania while I lived there. It's... it's it's not the same as working in the South, and most of the time I've worked in the South. Uh, I've worked um, uh, worked a lot of coastal archaeology. I, I'm from the mountains, but I, I, I tended to find coastal archaeology jobs. I worked uh, Camp Lejeune for a couple of. Uh, we you only work in Camp Lejeune in the winter time. You can't work in Camp Lejeune in the summer. It's it's impossible. It's it's a really horrible swamp, um, and the, 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 unlike the Army, the Army, I, I worked for the Army for many years also, the Army does uh, control birds. And so the, the forest areas that you're working in, in the, for the Army are open. You know, you don't, you don't have any real problems. You can just walk right through. But in, in the Marines, they don't do control birds. So what you end up doing is you have, you, you have to cut uh, your transects, and then each transect you'll have two two techs on a transect. One will be walking ahead with a machete cutting the transect, while you'll be behind him coming up digging the holes, and you'll uh, you know pass it, the machetes back and forth, you know, uh, as you move back and forth between the two different uh, things you're doing. Um, 
it, it becomes dangerous because, you know, you're cutting your way through this forest and you're cutting down these little trees. And so there's little sharp, spongy, like sticks all along the trail. So you're walking up the trail. If you fall down, you're going to, you're going to impale yourself. It was, it's, it's not that much fun. Uh, <laughs> and you really, it, there's so many vines. I, I, a good, good example. Let me look on here on my arm. Uh, I have a great scar from CRM. It's, I don't know if you can see it. I'll try to put it up here. Um, there's a, there's a scar running across my hand right here. And I am horrible at this video. Anyway, there, it's a, it's a long scar. I got this from a, a briar, a, not a briar, but a, a rose bush. I was cutting my way through a rose bush, and this rose bush must, it must have been, you know, a quarter of an acre. The the bush had grown so huge, and the thorns on this thing were, you know, I mean, that long. I I stabbed myself while I was cutting, and it it gashed me right across the wrist, and I have a long scar across my wrist. Um, and I I came really close to going to the hospital. I, I, I needed stitches that day, but we were so far out in the middle of nowhere. It's like, I'll, I'll, hold, I'll basically duct taped it together, and it, it healed with a scar. I mean, you know, it's just one of those things you do. So I.